Harry's Wife, Part 93.16. What's next for Harry and his wife? Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. As you know, I educate you about narcissism like nobody else can. Not only is my insight unrivaled, I also do so in a way that is entertaining, so that you find it easy to access, easy to understand, and it sticks in the mind. I do this in a variety of different ways, through straightforward videos about various aspects of the narcissistic dynamic, and utilising famous and infamous individuals, prominent of which is Harry's wife, quite simply because she covers so many facets of the narcissistic dynamic and so many people are interested in her that it behooves me to use her as a high-profile example. It's often asked, what's going to happen next with regard to her and the Prince of Pink Pancakes? Well, fortunately for us, or unfortunately, depending on your viewpoint, Insider is going to address that question. Now, what you need to ask yourselves, valuable viewers, is Insider going to tell us in terms of a warts and all, forensic analysis of what's going to happen for them? Perhaps they've been privy to your glorious narrator's work and therefore have utilised it to make an honest and accurate assessment of what could happen to them next, viewed through the lens of narcissism. Or is it something else? Might it be the provision of alternative information as part of this PR assault? I'll let you make your minds up in that regard. As always, I provide you with the analysis and the veracity of the material that I talk about. I let you, as sensible individuals, to determine for yourselves. The article that exists is written by somebody called Martha Hayes, who poses the question, keeping up with the Sussexes, what's next for Prince Harry and Harry's wife? It's been 18 months since Harry and Harry's wife upped sticks and relocated to the States. Martha Hayes checks in on Monty Shitshow's most famous couple. This weekend, a smiley queen dressed in apple green and pearls celebrated the 70th anniversary of her reign. The Platinum Jubilee weekend was low-key. Prince Charles and his wife, the Duchess of Cornwall, paid tribute, and the Duke of Duchess of Cambridge shared a story on Instagram. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex were conspicuous by their silence. See parts pass him for why that was. Still, the official celebrations will come over the four-day bank holiday in June, which Harry and Harry's wife are expected to attend. If they make the trip, Harry is in the process of a legal challenge to allow him to personally pay for police protection to ensure the safety of his wife and children, it will be a family reunion in the glare of the world's spotlight, a year after the Oprah interview widened the schism between the US and British branches of the Windsors, and 18 months since the couple relocated to Monte Chicho, a star-studded but sleepy seaside town a 90-minute drive from Los Angeles. The Sussexes will return with plenty to small talk about. Their daughter, Lilibet Diana, is now eight months old. Two-year-old Archie is making friends with the kids of their A-list neighbours, and Harry's back at work. Let's pause there. How do we know that Archie's making friends with the kids of their A-list neighbours? Hardly anybody ever sees him. And Harry's back at work. Don't you have to have been at work in order to return to it. Last week, the article continues, he addressed an online conference in his role as Chief Impact Officer, or as I call it, Chimp Officer, at Mental Wellness App, in which he advised 45 minutes of me time every morning. I don't think having a wank for 45 minutes, Harry, is what they're really thinking about, but there we are. And he urged employers to offer it to their staff. From an employer's perspective, you can't expect, in today's world, people to put in the work on themselves if you're not giving them the time to be able to do that, said the individual, who has largely been waited on hand and foot most of his life. While settling into the rhythm of life in coastal California, where they share a $14.7 million estate, the couple have kept a low profile. Have they now? Popping up repeatedly in news feeds and on broadcast news? That's a low profile, is it? 
Ah, yes, of course they wanted their privacy. Beside the odd shopping trip or Zoom conference, Harry's wife is a regular at Monte Shitcho Country Mart, a shopping village boasting designer children's clothing boutique Poppy. But that's all set to change. I can understand them locking down during the pandemic, as many people have, to keep their kids safe. But I think as we come out of this crisis, we'll be seeing more of them in the community, says former royal correspondent Richard Miniards, who lives near the couple in Monte Shitcho. So therefore, the residents of Monte Shitcho, if you haven't put your house up for sale so far, you may well want to, because it would appear that Harry and Harry's wife are going to be making more of an appearance. Oh, you lucky bastards. Harry's been out on his bicycle and walking his adopted Labrador on Miramar Beach, and she's been out shopping in both the Upper Village and Lower Village, and they seem to be very, very happy as far as I can see. In the last year or so, Harry and Harry's wife have spent most of their spare time making their house, a Mediterranean-style 18,000-square-foot nine-bedroom, 27,000-bathroom estate known as the Chateau of Riven Rock, feel more like a home. We moved here during lockdown, exactly when things shut down. Well, that is the nature of a lockdown. So we've just been able to spend a lot of time at home and creating our home, Harry's wife told friend and neighbour Ellen DeGeneres on a talk show in November. Well, what's that got to do with what's next? And that's just a regurgitation of something we've been told in the past and the fact that it demonstrates that nobody's that interested in them because the invitations have dried up. Nothing to do with lockdown. No doubt cult homeware store Hudson Grace, where Harry's wife was spotted, another plug, has come in handy because while the couple once seen at Lucky Steakhouse, another plug, on the buzzy Coast Village Road, more often they cook at home. What, like anybody else? Using local produce from Harry's wife's favourite family-owned deli, Pierre Lafon, another plug, which also stocks a fine selection of wine. Three plugs for the relevant outlets there, residual benefits. Given the year-round sunny climate, the family are embracing an outdoor lifestyle, with Archie regularly playing in the grounds of the 7.4-acre property, protected by a team of security guards like any other normal two-year-old. Like his dad, Archie likes to be barefoot. Well, his father has no choice in that when his slippers are taken away from him, by his handler, of course. A source told the American OK magazine, There's a cool playhouse in their garden, and Archie loves running around the lawn with the dogs. He's at the age where he can't keep still, like any other toddler that's aged two. Major revelations ahoy, aren't they, in terms of what's next? Are you starting to get the sensation that this is yet another PR puff piece? Is your spidey sense tingling? Talking of which... And thanks to their parents' Hollywood friends, Harry and Harry's wife are now said to be courting couple du jour, Spider-Man stars Zendaya and Tom Holland. Archie and Lily have, according to OK, had playdates with Katy Perry and Orlando Bloom's 16-month-old Daisy and David Foster and Catherine McPhee's baby boy Rennie. Is that to be taken in case of indigestion? Ten months. They've made a lot of friends here, particularly Orlando and Katie, who live nearby on Park Lane, says Miniards. They also have good friendships with Ellen and Oprah, who live minutes away, so they may well have been going over there and vice versa with the children. Or they may well have not been, because quite frankly, you don't know, and you're just speculating as to whether this is the case as part of this PR puff piece to make them look popular. But none of this is telling us what's happening next. It just tells us what they, you think they have been doing and that there is a suggestion that they are popular by having these play dates. But these are just names that have been articulated before with regard to David Foster and Catherine McPhee who were meant to be coming over for Christmas but probably found that they were washing their hair and didn't want to attend. Miniard said it's likely Archie will attend a local school. Fuck me, Really? So, young boy who has to enter education system attends local school. That's a major surprise. The catchment area where they live is Cold Spring School, which seems to be a very, very good public school. So I could well see Archie there when he becomes that age. Given all that, the fact that they feel secure and are not under the public spotlight like they would have been when they were living in Beverly Hills, I think they're blissfully happy here, he adds. So you just think it, you don't know. Why would you want to move? Well, isn't this somewhat at odds with the suggestion that their property is up for sale and, of course, there's a horrendous stink in the air? 
Well, quite. And yet there have been rumours that the couple are considering selling their property, which has a pool, tennis court, gym, spa and guest cottage. What is this, a realtor's advertisement? When Harry's wife's mother, Doria Ragland, although she appears to have been quietened, shall we say, visits. Because they are not over the moon with it. I don't think those stories are correct, says Minyards. It's an idyllic situation right between the mountains and the ocean. To be clear, there is absolutely nothing wrong with the lovely estate Harry and Harry's wife purchased. Jill Nelson, an estate agent at the agency in Monte Shitshow, and Santa Barbara told Realtor.com. Like many properties in town, most buyers would choose to update the interiors with new finishes and technology, as the couple has reportedly chosen to do so. And, of course, I'm the one that caused them to purchase it, and therefore I'm not going to say there's anything wrong with it, am I? According to Newsweek, house prices in the area have soared by up to 43%. I think they've got a wonderful house. In the 18 months they've been there, it's gone up amazingly in value, about £6 million. So it's now worth about £20 million, says Miniards. Is that with the stink? A sound investment, if they're as motivated by money as he suggests. I think they're very money-driven with their Spotify and Netflix and whatever other deals they can come across, and also registering their companies in Delaware, which is a more tax-free community. Residual benefits. They've obviously got their eye on the money, like their good friend James Corden, asshole, who now earns something like $12 million per season of the Late Late Show for basically doing very little. I think they'd like to get on that sort of level where hopefully they can earn lots of money and get their views across, but also do good things with the Archwell Foundation, the couple's non-profit organisation as well. Well, what this is, is basically an advertisement. It's saying, if you've got lots of money that you can throw at us for doing very little, then can you come and offer that money to us? Because we'd like lots of money for doing very little. But at the same time, don't forget, we are essentially wanting to maintain our charitable connections. The best of both worlds, the article continues, a lot like Monty Shitshow, and if Harry and Harry's wife are smitten, the feeling could soon be mutual. As people get to know them, I think they'll appreciate having them here. They've been there 18 months already, says Minyards. I don't think they'll move back to the UK at all. The British people see Harry's wife as the Wallace Simpson stealing the Golden Prince. They are much more welcome on this side of the Atlantic. But are they? You see, this is another PR puff piece, which first of all is entirely misleading because it doesn't say what's next for them at all other than suggesting that they'll stay put and that Archie might go to a local school. That's the height of the revelations about what's next with this article, which is just drawn in to basically say, honestly, we're really happy where we are and um, please give us some more money if you've got any uh, gigs going where we can get lots of money for doing sweet fuck all and whilst we're about it it would be quite useful please if uh, you all realize that everybody in america really loves us well americans you're here you're listening make yourselves known in the comments section what do you think about them are they that welcome are they I suspect they're not, and one suspects that you're rather sick and tired of PR puff pieces of this nature telling you that they are ever so welcome, that your voices are being snuffed out as to what you really think about these two individuals. So what we have here was no clairvoyant activity to look into the future of Harry's wife and the Prince of Pink Pancakes, but was rather another PR puff piece demonstrating that they're really happy, have a really lovely lifestyle, and everything is just ever so tickety-boo. When, of course, the more forensic analysis I've provided to you elsewhere in my work, The Future and Parts Passim, tells a different story entirely. Why? Because I'm able to tell you what life is like when you're dealing with a narcissist, when you're in Harry's position as the intimate partner primary source. I'm able to explain in detail because I am a narcissistic psychopath and I know exactly how I treat my intimate partner primary sources. And therefore I understand what he will be subjected to, albeit slightly differently because she's a different type of narcissist than the one that I am. But it won't be all sweetness and unicorns and jumping around and glitter far from it. But I've made that patently clear in other material. Here we just receive 
Another PR puff piece, designed to assert control, maintain that facade, seek out further opportunities by way of the residual benefit that is money, and to cause people to believe that everything is rosy in Monty Shit Show. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.